Alrighty, this is the second episode of the series. Um, basically, is going to be covering the Quorum County, and this is the regular meeting, regular court meeting on the 20th of January, 2022. As you can see in the meeting time, it was performed on the 20th here, on a Thursday. Um, there's three other things. I'm not sure if those are available necessarily to watch. But, yeah, um, we can have the agenda packet pulled up here. So we're going to turn it up. I'm going to play back probably 1.5, and then you'll get to see me bitch about people. As I was so this has everybody. So let's list the good people. Her. Her. And her and her. So these four. The four. These four women. Fuck everybody else, pretty much. Especially, fuck this guy. He was, like, not present at one meeting when we kind of needed him. And he's like, yeah, I'm trying to get re-election or something or something. And then her, she's, uh, what's her name again? Her name, uh, da, 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 da. I'm trying to remember. Her name is Lisa Eka in the red. She, you can always recognize her by the red. She sucks. Saying, I, I thought this had all been already dealt with with the planning committee because I started. I didn't have any information. I started as a citizen doing some investigative work, finding out who to call, and, and uh, I had talked to somebody, a gentleman by the name of Nick. And at that time, it sounded like he was on top of it. I was really, really happy with what he was telling me. He was running up their chain. He was going to get him with the county attorney, and it seemed like he was going to uh, handle this aggressively. Well, then the, the trucks, when they they had already hauled all this material out. As I was saying, the blasting, when they first blasted, I actually was in my shop and I heard blast material coming out of the sky and land, started going onto my metal shop building. That's a concern. I knew this was not right. That was too high of an explosive. Uh, when he looked at his seismograph, he looked at it and he says, yeah, that, that was a lot stronger than it should have been. And I was like, really? Uh, you know, this is a blaster with a lot of responsibility to uh, maintain uh, what he's doing in, in a safe manner. So I, I didn't want any more blasting. That was my main concern. I'm not against infrastructure. I'm not, I know we need gravel, but it also needs to be done in the right way. Well, when I contact planning committee, nobody knew anything about this operation. Had been, It was all a surprise this? Uh, with Nick and everything. It was just, and so they were going to find out. There had not been any permits. So I felt better with the county that, that I had not been notified. And so anyway, I uh, had this happen again, as I said, on the 7th of this year. Uh, uh, my son called me, and I was in Elkins at the time, and, and he called me and said, Dad, I have a man here who says he's fixing to blast again out here, and he wants to set up the seismograph. I said, no. I said, I will be there in less than 15 minutes. Well, by the time I had come back, he had already set the blast off. I have no idea what this guy is talking about. This is, like, completely out of the order, almost. And I'm confused. Off, and my son come out and took a picture of it from my back porch. That tells you how close this, these blasts are coming to my house. And he had told me that, when I, he said, when I told him, you said no. He said, well, he said, I'm blasting, and I'll just put it elsewhere. And he had blasted before I had gotten down, and now the trucks are just continually in and out. If you go down Durham McCord Road, I invite anybody to go down there. Uh, as we know, that was chipping sealed many years ago, and it's never been, since I've been out there, resurfaced. Uh, we get some hot mix and some holes periodically, and but there's been times the neighbors have went down and filled out in the holes. It's not going to stand up to this kind of truck traffic. All right, Mr. Livermore. Um, that's Mr. Otter back there. He's our director of planning, and I know Nick has been gone, I don't know, at least right. seven months or so, but we'll, we'll make sure we do some follow-up on that. All I, right? I've been in contact with Mr. Otter. Okay. Sam, and I, I appreciate his efforts, and I think he's going to be the right man okay. for the job. I just want to make people sure. aware of what's going on. Thank now. you. Thank you, Judge. Public comments. Uh, 19641 is my address, and the uh, quarry is being operated. It's, it joins my property, 19641 Durham McCord Road. Yes, sir. Elkins, Arkansas. Uh, the uh, property that the uh, mining operation is continuing is 19573. All right. Thanks, sir. 19573. Okay. Thank you. Public comments. Josh Moody, Fayetteville. I'd like to share some excerpts from a true story recently written at JDC. I was born in 2004. At nine months old, my grandparents got legal custody of me because my biological mother was really bad on drugs. The state once tried to see if my biological father would be able to take it. I feel like we just skipped ahead so far with this. Is there something I'm missing here? Twenty twenty two, and so amen to that. Um, I'm looking forward to what we have in store for twenty twenty two because of uh, didn't get started. I do want to make sure that I say think about the Washington. Because we would like Wilson. Okay, we're just missing a whole chunk of information here, honestly. Josh Moody Fayetteville. I'd like to share some excerpts from a true story recently written at JDC. 
I was born in 2004. At nine months old, my grandparents got legal custody of me because my biological mother was really bad on drugs. The state once tried to see if my biological father would be able to take care of me, but he was in jail. Many times my father denied me as a child. I was raped at the age of three by my uncle. Jesus. As I got older, I began to have behavior problems. I was in and out of facilities taking a whole bunch of medication, but the doctors couldn't help me. I was in fights a lot. Whoa, okay. I love this guy, but like, where are we right now? I, I don't know what's happening. We are out of left field, honestly. I was not prepared for this. Okay, so trigger warning, I guess. Come on, computer. There you go. Fighting authorities and my other peers. I really had a problem with the rules and authority figures, if you can imagine. In 2010, my little brother came along. He had to be in DHS custody. Then my, then my grandparents got full custody. I had to make some changes, making my little brother my main priority because he was a baby. And he oh, this is a Rocktown layover? So that guy was discussing some Rocktown layover stuff. I think. Campsite? I don't know if that's it then. And he needed that attention and support from his big sister. Bear in mind she was five or six at the time. As my younger brother got older, he began to pick up my bad habits and going in and out of facilities, taking a whole bunch of medication too. It made me feel really bad knowing that my younger brother is doing the bad things I was doing. It hurts a lot. In 2019, our biological mother became sober. She was living in a halfway house, and we were able to go there to spend time with her. Then she got locked up. But, it, but in the process of her being locked up, she found out she was pregnant with a baby girl. I always dreamed of having a baby sister. At that time, I was in a relationship with my girlfriend. She was very toxic. If I didn't do what she told me to do, she would beat on me. So I ran away from her. I got with a 19-year-old dude and got pregnant with a child. He always came home drunk and high off drugs. He beat me so bad, he punched me in my stomach, he kicked me, and eventually I went to the doctor and found out I had a miscarriage. In that relationship, I realized the differences between a man and a little boy. My grandfather beat me. I had suicidal thoughts. I know life can be hard, but I tried to make the best out of it. One thing I have learned in life is to forgive and not forget what a person has done to you. I forgive my mother, I forgive my father, I forgive everyone. I want to break the cycle, have a better life than what my mother is having, give my children the world, and make sure they know they can come to their mother for anything. I will accept them for who they are and who they want to become because I didn't get that in my life. And she's still a teenager. I love my family with all my heart, even the ones that hurt me. We will not incarcerate ourselves out of these problems. Now that ARPA guidelines explicitly prohibit using funds to expand jails, we need to be creative about how we invest in our community, children, and families. We can make this a more just and equitable place for all. Hope and opportunity are the antidotes for incarceration and addiction. Let's be pro-life by improving this child's life. We just need you to lead the way. Thank you. Public comments. Public comments. Thank you, your, thank you for listening. This, I'm Paula Combs, and I live at 12160 Turner Hill Road. Live next door to Dan Livermore. We also are concerned about the four quorum council meetings, the worst places for doxing. <laughs> um, I happen Christ. to be outside when the first blast went off, getting a stick of wood, and when it blew up, all the big plume went up and you could hear the gravel hitting my chicken houses. And I happen to be on the carport, so nothing hit me, but uh, it's very concerning. We have uh, slabs in our house, our music building, and so is our mother-in-law, and <clears throat> it is a... Uh... So everybody is annoyed by whatever this blasting thing is. Wood. Again, right. we called and talked to the planning commission. Whatever this thing is, everybody, everybody's all in a tizzy about it for some reason. It's like just annoying everybody. So like, eh, can you stop with that shit? Early on when they first went off last year. And then again this year. So we thought it was taken care of as well. But um, it's, it, the blast is just too much. And the traffic on Dermacore Road is terrible. It's just constant. Up and down, up and down, up and down. And I followed them down the hill. They're way overloaded. They're way overloaded. And so I have some pictures of that too. So um, I appreciate anything that can be done. Thank you. Thank you. Public comments. Public comments. All right, with that, then we'll move on to item. You're being an asshole. Come on, computer. Work with me here. It should not be this hard to fucking watch a YouTube video, okay? Six, uh, the approval of the minutes. What the motion, fuck? To approve, uh, motion to approve minutes. Second. The motion and the second, all in favor? Aye. Those opposed. All right, minutes have been approved. Item seven, uh, you should have got your disposal report and your uh, package. The only thing I wanted to visit, and I think uh, JP Hyatt's talked a little bit about it, we have seen uh, the uptick in, in the, um, the, the virus, and the president has come and pushed out a, and has been for some time trying to work on getting kids out to the. What the fuck, man? Why is my computer being like this?
Okay, so Nation. COVID yeah. blasting some random person in JDC who's like, my life sucked and I want to improve, make sure my kids don't experience the same thing. Okay. Those are the three things I and know. And now so they're far. available for kids per family. And so if you go to the United States Postal Service.com, USPS.com, you can apply to get at least four kids to your, your home. Uh, I do want to give a hats off to uh, Director Audrain in the library. Uh, she's our director for the library system in the county, and they've been working to get kids out, as well as uh, Dwight Gonzalez, our director of building and grounds, as well as our superintendent of roads. They have been well working uh, a lot with the uh, county health department to, to uh, distribute and get uh, kids out to our, our folks here in Washington County. So, but again, want to make sure everyone is aware. And again, I know they've been talking about it on TV, but USPS, United States Postal Service.com, you go there and apply online. Uh, um, to get your, your family kids if you so choose. Um, with that, item eight, prosecuting attorney, uh, Matt Durant, you're up. That's referring to like the f four testing kits per family, I think. Review our hot checks. Hello. Um, okay, the letter is in your packet. This is uh, pursuant to statute. Uh, we're required to give a report to court every year about our fee collection and expenditures. So uh, the report is kind of self-explanatory unless people have specific questions. Uh, you can see we brought in just about 4,300. Um, in fees last year spent uh, a little over 9100 so um, you see the balance on there it's dwindling down mainly because people aren't writing hot checks and most of the hot checks that are written go to the cities to collect so uh, but nevertheless if anyone's got questions or anything I'd be happy to answer them okay thank you thank you Council. item nine uh, consent agenda Jesus. council would you read those uh, by title only each one of the consent agenda items Item one of the consent agenda is an ordinance deappropriating ARPA money from various budgets and funds and appropriating that money back to the American Rescue Act Plan Fund 3046 for 2022. Item two is an ordinance appropriating $233,151.12 from the American Rescue Plan Act Fund 3046 to various line items in the Juvenile Detention Center budget for 2022. Item three is an ordinance appropriating $79,572 from the unappropriated reserves of the General Fund 1000 to various line items in the County Judge budget for 2022. Item four is an ordinance appropriating $5,676.30 from various funds to various budgets within the Tax Collector's Office for 2022. Okay, so right, basically, the, uh, the money towards like different policies. Okay. Items. There a motion to approve the uh, pass the consent agenda items. A motion to pass the consent agenda items. A second by J.P. Duncan. All in favor? Aye. Those opposed? All right. Consent agenda items pass. Item ten. Okay, this is our uh, Rocktown Layer uh, Layer Layover RV Park appeal, and so how this process will work, uh, we will have the planning team uh, walk through uh, the actual project after that we will have any agency that right. may be here to speak to you for listen, about the project effect. whether it be ADQ or the water uh, department no, have you. Uh, and then after yeah. that if the applicant is here and wish to speak uh, about their project they can and then after that there will be uh, public comments about the project after which we will turn it over to the forum court to to visit ask questions and have discussion all right so with that we'll go ahead and uh, again uh, have our planning team go ahead and walk through the project are you get you going uh, would you afford me a second so I can get my laptop synchronized Thank you for your patience. up in a second. It's in the uh, southern boundary of the county, kind of southeast of uh, uh, it's spitting distance to, uh, to uh, uh, Crawford County. Thank you. What the 
fuck is going on here? County, kind of southeast of uh, septic caddy system for wastewater disposal and removal. Uh, the applicant was denied in August and filed an appeal with the quorum court subsequently. Um, the uh, project is situated near Crawley and Bug Scuffle Road. Let's proceed a little bit further to the site plan, please. Thank you. Um, proposed site plan of six RV spots and a cul-de-sac turnaround. Uh, subsequent sh uh, slides will show um, um, various site perspectives of uh, site distance to and fro Bug Tussle and uh, Crawley along with uh, common areas on the site and the entrance. The is, is this the Durham thing? Feels like it's something different. Timeline of events shortly is that the process began in April when planning department received an application for the CUP. Uh, in May, the planning board uh, voted to table until the June meeting, um, and then the July meeting didn't happen. So a special August call meeting was held, and at which point the um, applicant was denied. The community has a uh, number of concerns that were expressed by letter and also uh, in person at the uh, May and August meetings, namely increased traffic with ATVs, UTVs, and general vehicles, potential for crime, uh, disruption of peaceful lifestyle, uh, noise, trespassing, uh, excessive alcohol consumption, and general incompatibility concerns. Um, during the August special call planning board discussion, um, six out of seven board members, unlike the May meeting, were in attendance. Uh, the surrounding community spoke in opposition to this previously mentioned points. Um, the board largely uh, revolved around two big points, and those are the concern of lack of... So basically doing some RV park, but then they're like, oh, don't bring the trash here, basically. That's kind of the vibe I'm getting. Infrastructure to support an RV park, and also uh, concern about lack of sanitation and how it could lead to unsanitary conditions. The board denied the CUP four against, two in favor. Um, the planning board would generally um, uh, accept the CUP uh, so long as the RV park remain an RV park. If it were to grow in excess of one acre, it would have to go for large-scale development. Um, so any future use would have to be heard before the, uh, before the planning board. Um, the applicant would have to actively enforce uh, quiet times between 10 p.m. and 6 a.m. Um, and also a maximum 45 consecutive days for a, uh, for a tenant. Uh, the applicant and uh, representation are here for further questions. All right, with that, before we bring the applicant up, let's see if there's any uh, agencies here. Um, do we have anyone from any of the varying agencies, water, ADQ? If not, then we'll go ahead and have the come up. If they'd like to share about the project. Good evening. Move your mic down so we can make sure we hear everybody. Is that better? Yep, yep. Thank you. Uh, my name is Paul Young. My name is Paul Younger, and I'm here on behalf of Rick and Choice England. And they own a company called Rocktown Layover RV Park. What they propose to do is to build a six-unit RV park on a 40-acre track of land. The land on the is on the map that's being passed around, and it's the center 40-acre track on the first map, and the second map shows where the RV parking spots will be located. This track of land is located in the southwest corner of Washington County, near the National Forest. In this area of the National Forest has the Buckhorn Trail System that is set up for ATV riders, hikers, and cyclists. The National Forest is also open to hunters, campers, and other outdoor recreation. The proposed RV park is approximately one mile from the entrance in the parking area of the trail system. The RV park that's being proposed is to be an accessory and enhancement to the existing recreational uses of the area and the National Forest. It's designed to be used hand-in-hand -hand with the uses of the National Forest. The recreational uses of the National Forest will have a place to stay in their RVs when they're using the facilities in the forest. This appeal comes down to three basic issues. First is that the proposed use is consistent with the current use of the land in the surrounding area. Secondly, it's about the rights of property owners to use their property in a way that is reasonable to their surrounding neighbors. And third, it's about the enhancement of the existing recreational facilities in the area. In the planning commission meeting, several of the surrounding property owners raised some objections and concerns. And I don't want to spend too much time on these because I filed a written appeal and most of the objections are addressed in that appeal. But briefly, uh, one of the concerns that was raised was there would be an increase in traffic on Crawley Road. Well, the RV park that's being proposed is only six spots, so it's a very limited amount of traffic that's being, uh, that would be increased. Secondly, on that issue, the users of the RV park only have to travel approximately <coughs> 100 feet down Crawley Road to get to Bugscuffle Road, and that takes them on into the uh, trail system. So any additional traffic that would be caused would be for a 100-foot distance down the road. And according to the comments made by the surrounding property owners at that planning commission meeting, there's already traffic from ATVs and side-by-sides on Crawley Road. And th that's, therefore, the RV park is not creating an additional traffic problem. And currently, driving ATVs on the roads in that area is legal, and it is occurring. There was also concern raised that there would be noise and light pollution emanating from the RV park. Now, as you can see on the maps, the areas where the RVs will be parked is near the road, and it's on a 40-acre wooded tract of land. And as the Planning Commission gentleman stated, the overall development is less than one acre. Now, where the location of the RVs are parked would provide for nearly a 1,000-foot wooded buffer zone to the closest neighbor's property line. This makes light and noise pollution very unlikely. Additionally, the RV park is willing to build a fence around the RV park that alleviates concerns about noise and light. And again, in this issue, the surrounding property owners expressed concern that the current use of ATVs in the area creates noise. 
And this is just showing our further point that the RV park is consistent with the current use of the land around it. There's already ATV riders there, and RV park for ATV riders makes sense. The surrounding property owners also expressed a concern that they use their property for hunting, and they felt it might not be safe. Yeah, to like, just to want to say something is, this is the kind of stuff that's, like, really boring, but it's also, like, really important for, like, local politics, because it's, like, how property gets developed, how it's going to affect your life, how it's going to affect the people around you, how if you decide to develop something, then it's going to have an effect on other people. So the reality is anything that person does has an effect on another person, regardless if you want to acknowledge it or not. So, like, these things absolutely are important they're just not very entertaining you know <laughs> jesus christ sorry for hearing hunting season obviously the hunter is responsible for hunting safety and the hunter is responsible for ensuring that their bullets don't travel onto someone else's property um any safety concerns during hunting season is solely the responsibility of the hunter and not the adjacent property owner there was also a concern expressed about increase in crime and excessive alcohol consumption in the area however there's absolutely nothing to suggest that people using an rv park are more or less likely to commit crime or consume alcohol in excess than any other person would and there were some additional concerns, um, and to address these, the owners of the RV park drafted a set of rules for the park. Specifically, that guests were not allowed to stay longer than 10 consecutive nights, there would be quiet hours in the park, and that all campers would be required to keep their campsites clean and dispose of trash properly. All of the concerns that the property owners expressed seem to result, revolve around one issue, and that's the use of ATVs and side-by-sides in this area. But the use of ATVs and side-by-sides here is already in existence. It's caused by the National Forest Trail System, not by a potential RV park that's being put in next to that trail system. And the fact that these ATVs and side-by-sides are already in use in this area furthers our point that this use is consistent with the use that's occurring in that area. And in fact, it's been made legal to drive these ATVs on the roads in that area, and that's not the usual rule. So it's already been made specifically legal to drive the ATVs from the trail system to where the park would be located. This is exactly consistent with the use of the property in that area. Um, All right, uh, just because it's illegal doesn't necessarily it's actually happening in reality, right? So the question then comes is, these people who stay, will they bring RVs and everything and form like that kind of function? That's the question more than anything. One of the other concerns that was brought up was how the sewage was going to be disposed of. And since the last planning commission meeting we've had uh, some work done, I'm going to let my client, Ms. England, update us real quick on where we stand with the sewage system. I'm Troy England, and uh, we are trying to... Go ahead, yes. Sorry. Okay, yeah. Sorry about that. I'm Troy England, and we are the ones that are trying to put in this RV park. Um, we have uh, got someone coming... Uh, we have scheduled January the 27th for uh, Water and Environmental of Northwest Arkansas to uh, come and do a perk test and the layout of a dump station for us so we can meet the requirements of and uh, the concerns of the neighbors around us. Thank you. This appeal is also about the property rights of landowners in this county. The owners of real property have a right to use their property in any way that does not unreasonably interfere with the property of the neighbors. Since the proposed use in this area is consistent with the current ongoing use in the surrounding land, our proposed use does not interfere with the surrounding property owners' use of their property. The surrounding property owners are trying to dictate what occurs on their neighbor's property. And they're asking the county government to deny their neighbors the right to use their property in a manner that they see fit. And I can assure you that if the shoe is on the other foot, the surrounding property owners would not be happy about it. All right. Finally, the proposed RV park. It's also about enhancing the existing uses of the land in the surrounding area. The park is less than one mile from the National Forest. This forest is used for ATVs, hiking, mountain biking, hunting, camping, and other outdoor recreational activities. A place to park your RV in the camp one mile from the National Forest, it just makes sense. This park would be a direct and clear enhancement of the existing outdoor recreational facilities in Washington County. The, the RV park would enhance and complement the existing recreational activities that are occurring in that area right now. We would ask that the court table voting on this matter until the next meeting so that we can prevent completed plans for the septic system to the court. As you know, getting construction work done in this area right now takes a little bit of time. And we've got something on the schedule to have the protest done, and we'd like to have the results. All right. So basically, they're like, hey, we're checking to make sure we can uh, prepare for a sewage process. So like, that was the question, and they're like, okay, we got to resolve that. But at this point, they're like, yo, dude, just let us fucking build this. That's like their that's their whole entire argument. It's like, these, the, people, the people who own it are like, they want to do this. So like, let them do it, you know? It's not going to fuck with you. But whether or not it's going to have a significant impact, like, maybe those people work or something, and then that will keep them up and everything. And it's like, yeah, don't want to deal with that shit, you know? But, like, if there's enforced, like, night parts, like, how are you going to do that? If it's, like, a privately run company, then is the, are the property owners going to enforce it themselves? Like, that's a question that's, like, concerning. That presents you before you vote on the matter if the septic system is a concern. In conclusion, this appeal relies on three facts. The first is that the existing land use in the area is consistent with an RV park for ATV riders and other users of the National Forest. Secondly, the property owners in this county have a right to use their property in a reasonable manner. And thirdly, this RV park is going to enhance the outdoor recreational facilities in this county and the surrounding area. I appreciate your time and consideration of this matter, and I hope that you vote to approve this conditional use permit. Thank you. Thank you very much. We're going to hear from the public before we come to the uh, JPs for discussion. Any public comments, either for or uh, against? Hello, uh, my name is Mark Falden. I represent the Falden Family Trust as well as uh, many of the landowners uh, of the area. Uh, you may know uh, my family name is Cantrell. Um, this is our property is the original Cantrell homestead. Uh, the Falden Family Trust. Uh, 
counter from stem. that we homesteaded, my family homesteaded, uh, from directly from the U.S. government uh, in the late 1800s. So our property contains multiple old home sites as well as miles and miles of hand stack rock walls. When you talk about original Ozark County, Washington County families, it is the Cantrells, my family, the Falcons, the Jimses, the Cooksies, and the Crawleys. And so um, I had a letter here uh, as well as a graphic uh, where uh, with some signatures, a lot of our uh, uh, neighbors unable to attend, obviously very COVID. This was presented at the Planning Board Commission as well. So I would read this to you and then I'll make a couple of comments. So uh, the undersigned residents and landowners pr uh, present this letter for the record to voice our unified opposition to the conditional use permit for Rockdown Labor RV Park. Many of the undersigned are fifth generation stewards of our land uh, that our ancestors owned homesteaded over 100 years ago. The proposed use is inconsistent with the historical and Use of land and will cause Does my damage. computer want to work with me here? Life. Is that possible? Like, why is it being such an asshole right now? The landowners represented here account for 1,100 acres. Uh, all the property owners along Crawley Road and 97% of the acreage located within two square miles of this property, as well as all the properties on all four sides of the proposed uh, RV park. Uh, we do ask the uh, claim commission to deny it in APA. Um, you really, they denied it over a lot of the ecological facts of it. Uh, when you look at the map that you look at, uh, this proposed site is at the top of the ridge along the old Butterfield uh, stagecoach uh, route. And so, so any kind of sewage is either going to run off into Fall Creek uh, or Lee Creek, uh, Cove Creek, and then into Lee Creek uh, from the area as well. So, uh, you know, her attorney um, mentioned that it is consistent with the use. I would point out that uh, there is no national forest land in Washington County. Uh, that is all Crawford County. There are multiple sites within the national forest that allow for camping and recreation area. Um, so when they say that this would benefit Washington County, the only thing I really see it doing is causing increased road work uh, for our county to maintain the damage uh, created by whatever uh, goes on at that property. So, um, you know, once again, it's, it's just really something that, uh, you know, I keep on going back to it. It'd be like you guys putting a, a Casey's convenience store on the side of uh, Mount Wedding, or, you know, Mount Sequoia here, right? Because this is nowhere near what, what we use our property for. Um, you know, they're talking about some quiet hours and stuff, stuff like that. The way I read the proposal, there's not going to be any one-size staff, right? So if there is a problem with drinking or noise or alcohol or whatever it is, um, we're a solid 45 minutes away from any kind of, of, of help. Yeah. I was, I was curious, if it's privately enforced, are they going to have staff? Like, that's extra money that's going to eat into their costs. Like, why would they do that? Right, I'm being reported. So, um, so once again, it's just really a matter of this is very inconsistent. Uh, we have a unified opposition of all the landowners around the area. Uh, by all means, you know, if, if, if it was, you know, once again, something with, with a family environment, you know, with, with you know, using it like we all use our property, but they are going to turn it into a commercial development. I um, mean, this is one of the most rural areas of Washington County where families are, are being raised, uh, crops are being tended, hay, cows are being ran. Um, it, this is not a commercial area, right? And, and when they say that they want to be, uh, it, the use is consistent with what it is, that consistent use is Crawford County, not Washington County. So that's all I have. Any questions? We can finish with the uh, public comments before we come to the JPs. Any other uh, public comments? Go ahead. Yep, hit the, no, hit the button. Hey, okay. there you go. Teresa Jens, um, I live at 21957 Bugs Couple Road, West Fork. Um, I am probably the resident that's lived there the longest. I've never lived anywhere but Bugs Couple. Um, I just want to say that scuffle. everything that Mark said. I love that fucking name. I just to show that, that is an amazing name. All right. I live in Bug Scuffle. <laughs> West Fork. It's like, uh, I fables like, uh, if it's like right here, West Fork is like right here, approximately. So like there's Elkins, West Fork, uh, generally that area. So it kind of like cuts into Crawford County a little bit. And it is Washington County. The National Forest is Crawford County. So it would be Washington County's um, deputies that would respond if there was a problem. It would be the U.S. game. Wildlife and game would respond in Washington County if there was a problem. Um, the upkeep on the road, the road is very narrow. I don't think that that's been addressed properly. Um, the road is very narrow for RVs to pass. It's hard to pass a tractor and an RV. It's hard to pass a tractor and, and the, the buggies that are coming down on trailers. Um, I just think that those things need to be addressed, um, as well as the, the waste for the site. Um, I don't see anybody loading up one of those caddies in the back of their truck and driving 20 miles to deposit it in the waste station. <coughs> um, maybe they would be willing to do that, but I feel like that waste probably would get dumped on the National Forest. Again, that's Crawford County, but still, it's one mile down the road and it's National Forest, and we've seen it with the people that are already camping in the National Forest. They will dump in the National Forest and not go to the nearest station, which is at Greenland or at Devil's Den, to dump their trailers. They leave out with their trailers empty. So I'm very concerned that that's what would happen at this property. And with it being in the Lee Creek watershed, I think that's a dangerous situation. I guess that's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. Public comments. My name is Tara Browning, and I am at 22161 Bugs Couple. That is where I currently live, and I have another 911 address where we have already been approved by the Washington County um, for a septic system to build our future house. Um, and that address is 22179 Bugs Couple. I am the one of the newest people to Bugs Couple. We've lived there almost three years. The Englands are newer than we are, though. Um, but with us being new. Holy I shit, they all know each other. I love this. Okay, this is local drama. Be like, oh, yeah. We, we all are in, on in this together. Fuck them, okay? Fuck those guys. They don't give a shit about us. They don't know our place. <laughs> I 
I love this. So, so anyways, I already knew the gens. I grew up with some of the gens. I knew some of the other neighbors. Um, we all watch out for each other. We all take care of each other. We are a community. Mark mentioned raising families. I am 30. My husband and I have been together for 13 years. Before we moved out here, we lived in Springdale. 17. Okay. We have intentionally not had children yet because we are waiting for a very family safe area to have children. Um, turning 30, it was our we have our land, we're gonna build a house, it was our time to start trying to have a family, and then we get slapped with this. So my property on 22179, where I'm going to build my future house, apparently I don't matter to the Englands when they mention that there's a buffer between all the property owners, because with me, that is not true. With me, my house will be at the end of this room, and their RV park will be where you are sitting, Judge. There's no buffer between my property, my future backyard, and their RV park, none whatsoever. Also, um, the England choice herself has already been very hostile with me in the past whenever I presented my issues, so I don't feel like that's gonna go very well. I am the last person with water. I know they're not mentioning water, but in case that ever comes up, they don't have water, and um, I don't think it's gonna be very easy to get it from me, <laughs> just saying. Um, my biggest concern is just the people that it's gonna bring to the area in general. So we live right off the main road. Anybody who wants to come out there has potential to check out the area, scope it out, do whatever they wanna do, because as it's been mentioned, we are 45 minutes away from help. I have already had to call the sheriff many times in the past to report things, and number one, um, Many of the things are not enforceable. Quiet hours are not enforceable in the county. Spe um, there's not speed limit signs. There's just not really anything that can be enforced with this RV park, especially whenever they're not gonna have employees. So they're not gonna have employees to enforce rules or safety of people trying to raise families. There's no buffer between me and them to block noise or whatever else might be happening. The road, um, okay, so they only have to travel down 100 feet of Crawley Road, but what about Bugscuffle? They have to travel down Bugscuffle. Bugscuffle is poorly maintained by the county, probably not due to the lack of anybody, but it's just the way the road is. Anytime it rains, it gets flooded, it gets washed out, huge potholes form. Um, and it's not very wide whenever you're trying to pass an RV. <laughs> so it's not just Crawley Road that would have to be taken into consideration in regards to how wide the road is. It is also Bugs Couple. And again, that is a Washington County issue. So like Teresa and Mark have both mentioned, this is not a benefit to Washington County. It is a benefit to Crawford County and a problem for Washington County. So I ask that you would please deny this RV park. Thank you. Other comments? Okay, JP. I would be so curious to look at Crawford County and see if they're doing any shit over there too. You, guys, well, you can come in and sit down, but the JP is already <laughs> have a question for having a discussion. Uh, JP Eggie? Ecky, is that how it is? Thank you, Judge. I'd like to make a motion to table this for the next month's uh, quorum court meeting as to give time for the um, people to come up with a septic system because I think that is the number one issue that most people have, and if they can um, resolve that, it would help mm. this court make a better decision. What's on the first reading, so uh, there's a motion to table and move to February's meeting. There's a second. All in favor? Aye. Those opposed? All right. It's been tabled to February. Thank you. Let's go to item 11. Uh, what is that? 12, 11, 12, 13. Item 13. Council, will you read that one by title only? An ordinance appropriating $315,000 from the American Rescue Plan Act Fund 3046 to the pass-through payments line item in the American Rescue Plan Act budget 3046-0568-3014 for 2022. Uh, J.P. Johnson. All right. I think we have a Thank pretty good idea. This is the ordinance that... Uh... All right. So it basically is um, there's this big area that and like uh, kind of like towards the edge of Washington County and crossing into Crawford County that basically is like people are, some people are wanting to build a... RV park makes some money off of it, but the problem comes is like there's a lot of things they're not accounting for, and it's like, hey, can you like get your shit together a little bit and stop misrepresenting the shit? That's basically a lot of the people are feeling more than anything, and the, so yeah. Uh, funds returning home for one more year. The difference between this ordinance and the one we passed a year ago, this one funds 16 beds instead of 10 beds, and the rate per bed has been reduced from $60 a day. We've already covered this before, but basically is um, the housing inside of the jails uh there's been a significant peak of overcrowding and like a no 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 this is actually the uh this is the little special commission that basically uh provides some uh offload like uh assistance they help take on some of the uh people and they have a decent uh, level of uh non uh incarcerate uh, non-recidivism so like they take on a small group but are very highly effective what they do so it's like able to offload some of the burden that the Washington County is going to face personally in terms of like jails and such. To $54 a day. And the reason we need to take care of this now is that if they get down under 90 days in the current program without additional funding, they don't have the ability to enroll any more people in the program. So I move we pass this ordinance. There's a motion and a second uh, discussion. Any discussion? Any public comments? Any public comments? All right, Ms. Myra, we take a roll. Joe Wilson? Yes. Butch Pond? Yes. Lance Johnson? Yes. Shannon Marty? Yes. Bill Ustry? Yes. Patrick Deacon? Yes. Lisa Eggie? Yes. Sam Duncan? Yes. Chandra Washington? Yes. Eva Madison? Yes. Robert Dennis? Yes. Suki Hires? Yes. Evelyn Rio Stafford? Passes. Okay, ordinance 13 passes uh, with 11 or 10 or more votes, so again, that's done. Uh, thank you, Ms. Myra. Uh, item 14, 
Council, would you do that one by title only? An ordinance ratifying a conditional use permit recommended for approval by the Planning and Zoning Board. Uh, J.P. Rio Stafford. All right. All right. There you go. <laughs> Thank you, Judge Wayne. Uh, uh, this was uh, the planning board uh, voted to recommend this at their meeting in December. Uh, this is a woman who lives in my district on uh, 1.44 acres, and uh, she'd like to build uh, basically a detached analog unit uh, so she can move into that about 576 square feet small uh, so that her daughter and her husband can move into the main house. Uh, and I move, uh, uh, I make a motion to approve this ordinance. There's a motion and a second to approve item 14. It's on its first reading, so without uh, suspension of rules, we'll, we'll move on to February. There's a motion to suspend the rules and move to a second reading. A second by uh, J.P. Ecke. All in favor? Aye. Those opposed? All right, Council, we read that one for a second time. An ordinance ratifying a conditional use permit recommended for approval by the Planning and Zoning Board. There's a motion to suspend the rules and move to a third and final reading. A second by J.P. Ecke. All in favor? Aye. Those opposed? All right, Council, will you read down for the third and final? An ordinance ratifying a conditional use permit recommended for approval by the Planning and Zoning Board. Yeah, what a lot of people don't uh, realize is a lot of the uh, policies of getting, like, new housing stuff built, you have to go through directly through, like, the local government. So this is, like, what's going to be part of the process is you have to, like, register and get all that stuff cited, and then they're like, hey, can I do this? And then a lot of them are going to be like, yeah, we're okay with this. <clears throat> Although I'm not sure how like a formalized it is, maybe they usually are just like, yeah, okay, cool. But come on, it requires a democratic process. We did it. Okay, uh, I moved to approve this ordinance. That's me. That's a motion to approve uh, item 14. A second, second by JP Pine. Any discussion? Any discussion? Public comments? Any public comments, Ms. Myra? Jim Wilson, yes. Butch Pond, yes. Nance Johnson, yes. Shannon Marty, uh, Bill Esri, yes. Patrick Deacons, yes. Lisa Ecke, yes. Sam Duncan, yes. Shonda Washington, yes. Eva Madison, yes. Robert Dennis, yes. Suki Hires, yes. e Ellen Rio Stafford. Yes. Motion passes. Thank you, Ms. Meyer. Item 14 passes. Item 15, Council, would you read that one by title only? An ordinance ratifying a conditional use permit recommended for approval by the Planning and Zoning Board. JP Lemming is uh, out. It's on his first reading. And unless JP wants to go ahead and, and move, uh, we'll just wait until February for this particular item. With no objection, we'll just move ahead to, and that'll move on to. Uh, February's meeting, item 16. Council, would you read that one by title only? An ordinance ratifying a conditional use permit recommended for approval by the Planning and Zoning Board. J.P. Wilson. Thank you, Judge. Uh, this is to establish a towing and auto operation in the cup. I'm unaware of any uh, complaints within the neighborhood about it. I would ask if there are any, if there's anybody here to speak to this one against it. If not, I move uh, for suspension of the rules and move to second reading. Uh, we have a motion to suspend the rules and move to second. And second by J.P. Dennis. All in favor? Aye. Those opposed? All right, Council, would you read that for a second? An ordinance ratifying a conditional use permit recommended for approval by the Planning and Zoning Board. Yes, I move for suspension of the rules and move to third and final reading. The motion for uh, suspension of the rules moves to third and final reading. Second by J.P. Dennis. All in favor? Aye. Those opposed? All right, Council, will you read that they're, one for third and final? An ordinance ratifying a conditional use permit recommended for approval by the Planning and Zoning Board. That's how it's here. I move for What's approval the of this normal ordinance. There's a motion to approve. And a second. Any discussion? Any discussion? Public comments? Public comments? Ms. Myra? Jim Wilson? Yes. Butch Pond? Yes. Lance Johnson? Yes. Shannon Marty? Yes. Bill Esri? Yes. Patrick Deacons? Yes. Lisa Ecke? Yes. Sam Duncan? Yes. Chandra Washington, yes. Eva Madison, yes. Robert Dennis, Suki Hires, yes. Evelyn Rio Stafford. Motion passes. Right, thank you, Ms. Meyer. Item 16 passes. Item 17. Council, would you read that one by title only? An ordinance ratifying a conditional use permit recommended for approval by the Planning and Zoning Board. J.P. Lance Johnson. Thank you, Judge. Uh, this is a conditional use for the uh, Victor Carrera residential project. It was passed unanimously by the Planning Commission. And there was no opposition. I move we move it to the second reading. There's a motion to move to the second reading second. and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Those opposed? No, like, I don't want to spend any time on this. Ordinance ratifying a conditional use permit recommended for approval by the Planning and Zoning Board. Thank you, Judge. Uh, I move, we move that we suspend the rules and move this to the third and final reading. There's a motion to move to the third and final reading. Second. A second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Those opposed? All right, Council, will you read that one for the third and final? An ordinance ratifying a conditional use permit recommended for approval by the Planning and Zoning Board. Just imagine, like, every single little thing that gets built within the county, they're like, oh, God, we got to approve all that shit. It's like, just got to, like, steamroll that shit, because fuck having to talk about every single one of those, you know, because that'd be annoying as hell. Judge, I don't know. I, think it's, I, don't know. I move we pass this ordinance. All right, we got a motion to pass. And a second, any discussion? Any discussion? Public comments? Any public comments? All right, Ms. Myra. Jim Wilson, yes. Butch Pond, yes. Lance Johnson, yes. Shannon Marty, yes. Bill Esri, yes. Patrick Deacons, yes. Lisa Ecke, yes. Sam Duncan, yes. Chandra Washington, yes. Eva Madison, yes. Robert Dennis, yes. Suki Hires, yes. Evelyn Rio Stafford. Passes. All right, thank you, Ms. Meyer. Item 17 passes. Item 18. Council, will you read that one by title only? An ordinance ratifying a conditional use permit recommended for approval by the Planning and Zoning Board. And JP Deacons. Thank you, Judge Wood. I'd like to leave this on first reading. Uh, 
Nob Hill Fire Chief had some, we were having a discussion about this a couple weeks ago, we had some questions that we might have wanted to get resolved. I'd like to mention that um, Chief Hall lost his wife earlier this week, so keep him in your prayers and send him a good message if you will, but uh, I would like to leave this on first reading. Thank you very much. On his first reading, we'll move on to February. Uh, item 19, uh, committee reports. County services didn't have a meeting. Uh, finance and budget, J.P. Deacons. The report is in the packet. And jails and law enforcement, J.P. Johnson. Can we work on the audio system? <laughs> oh, my finger touch, yes. Uh, and personally, I'll J.P. Aki. Thank you, Judge. The uh, minutes are in the packet, thank you. And with that, the meeting is adjourned. All right, now there was one thing that I was confused about. I'm trying to, I'm trying to see what ordinance it may be. Because this is like the biggest thing. They're like, ah, fuck this. Rocktown layover. Okay. Okay. Regular corp form count meeting agenda packet. All right, we're gonna look at this real quick. We have there's one thing. Yeah. Rock time really over. Okay, so this is it. What ordinance is it under, though? Additional unit per use per. It's not an ordinance. It's a use permit request. So they've tried and applied, and then it hasn't necessarily gone through yet. After that, they had to appeal, hearing, decision, discussion. <coughs> Uh, twelve. Okay. And then the decision was pushing it back and it's denied okay I'm pretty sure they decided to push it back right this is here um, do we have anyone from any of the varying agencies water or ADQ if not then we'll go ahead and have that come up 40 acre track of land is to be an accessory to the comments made by the obviously legal to drive the this force is used for and so uh, that uh, the use is con Gain. Go to the nearest station with, with some of the jazz room, and there are already parcels. It's flooded, it gets washed out, huge pothole to come up with a septic system, because I think that is the number one issue that most people have, and if they can um, resolve that, it would help I don't like this space. What's on the first reading? So, uh, there's a motion to table and move to February's meeting. There's a second. All in favor? Aye. Those opposed? All right. All right, so it's moved to the February meeting. They'll have to figure it out, and then... They'll have to figure out their models and make decisions off. So basically, this has been the. Uh, let's get my camera working here. So this has been the second series in the quorum council. I'm going to be uh, so some frustrations is um, I didn't like that some of the information was missing, like in terms of the overall process. It feels like maybe looking at the agenda. Maybe it was fine. Maybe I had everything. Maybe I'm just stupid. Maybe. Anyways. Uh, it just felt like it started in the middle of the public comments, mostly. Prayer employed preliminary motion, citizen comments. Approval of minutes. Yeah, so... They had their prayer adoption agenda. For, okay, so... It, it just felt so off-kilter because they had the first initial video and then they had this. So anyways, yeah, basically, uh, people are frustrated towards the people who want to build the RV park. The rest of it is just people wanting to build stuff and, like, repropriating funds. Um, as a whole, it's been fine. And then they're trying to 
make sure the funding goes towards that uh, one specific program that has like a very has a no recidivism rate so that's like good to do and other than that it just it's mostly like local stuff and they're just helping to affect politics and such so those, those are important things and things to keep in mind and important things to pay attention to so anyways i think that's pretty much going to cover this second series like just keep in mind like it's good to cover these politics and cover these things and understand how you can get involved in the local community uh, make sure you pay attention to your quorum council meeting pay attention to when things are occurring and keep an eye on all that you know so anyways you uh have a good night there